Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting, innovating, and amazing propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane. The one and only master propaganda hero, like defender of the fatherland, off until one we one on the twin beaches. In the south, we have Nathan, a funny here for the British Empire, the Commonwealth, here with the sixth armor division, and of course, the Australians, popular as always, the Australian Knight. Defensive infantry then with the Australian defensive battle group. Well, I messed it up. In the north though, we have the German army. It's Daniel D here with the fourth Falchion maker to be shown here with the Luftwaffe dropping in the Falchion puny right away here on the fuel point on Mount Bacon. Cat and Crat following up here. Falchion maker divisions did actually have some Cat and Crats or the half tracks attached to them, typically part of the reconnaissance battalions, which seemingly, at least on paper, were fairly um, well, well equipped for what was otherwise an infantry division. But, anyways. <clears throat> As always, big hearty thanks to my Patreon supporters for the continued generous and absolutely delightful support. And a big hearty thanks to me, I be me for donating. Helps out immensely the course there with every dollar there. And a big hearty thanks to keep commenting and liking my videos. Helps out immensely there, again with the YouTube algorithms. Helps to get the video up to as many people as possible. So, Dingo here for Nath. Obviously, I imagine we might see some more Dingos again as Cat and Crat starting to become more popular from the Wehrmacht. It's going to be you know, a tool to hunt down as the Cat and Card. Of course, put treasure on. The German force, we got the Australian champions using the Falchion Pioneer here. We got another Falchion Pioneer squad dropping in here. Nice and aggressive here from Daniel D and Deutschland. Rolling in here from above here, the Falchion Pioneer fighting here. Hand to hand combat with the Aussies. Our force to fall back here. No grenades immediately to support here. Daniel D though. He does lack a bit of, uh, you know, merge capability, which is always typically great to have with your Falchion Pioneers and your Falchion Makers. Just a few. Grenadiers to shall say top them off, and then particularly in the early game, just help you know manage reinforcement costs a bit better. Dingo, they're dealing with the Falchion Pioneer though, firing in with a little Bren gun there, mounted ahead here. Falchion Pioneer dealing with the can against those Tommies, but they are struggling a bit here. We do get some Sanger Walls here out of Nath as he pushes on Mertz for the King himself. Ken Crad, we actually see no action here from down in the south side, focusing heavily on north here. Personally, I tend to go for a more broad approach. You tend to focus on the southern beaches, but at the same time, Northlight does have the advantage. You don't have to deal with these absolutely god awful cutoff points. So, got the Dingo there racing after the Falchion Pioneer. Might score Wiper, which in the early game, of course, particularly on the Falchion Pioneers, would be absolutely devastating here for Daniel D. Getting crab rushing in here. Falchion Pioneer up. Dingo withdrawing here. High tilling out there as fast as the little wheels can carry it. Step on it, Nigel! I'm trying! I'm trying! We do get some grenadiers here out for Daniel D and Britannia. Pioneer's busy here, Falchion Pioneering Southford. Gonna try him to hop the sappers there from fixing up the Dango. Nathan immediately orders to hop because obviously they do take extra damage when they're repairing there. Ken Crack getting shot at, Falchion Pioneer there. Note he's actually ordered a halt to auto reinforce here. Because he definitely wants the Grandees to merge for the Falchion Puny. Here's a thumbs up to Daniel D there. And we do get the officer's quarters here. Pardon me, but I expect to see less of that, of course, after they make that more expensive. But Daniel D, of course, is a big believer in proper you know, leadership for his men, clearly. Daniel or Nathan mean follow up a regular section. Possibly because he wants some anti-tank rifle just snares, because the Australians are otherwise, you know, very vulnerable versus light vehicles. They might be rugged. They might have a dashing accent, but they have no way of dealing with anything, you know, more armor than a German infantryman. Or a Kettenkrad. Officer's quarter's almost done here. So, Nate so far, the really strong early game here versus Daniel D. Particularly losing that early engagement have really sort of uh, made things a bit rougher there for Daniel D, obviously. So, Nathy is getting a lot of fuel there. In fact, he's got almost all the fuel points except for the one up here. Which would certainly be very depressing for Daniel D if Nate thought to help that. Ken Crab being fixed. That said, he does have actions one now. And this, of course, means his Falchion Pioneers and Grenadiers will perform a lot better. So that's obviously going to be a bit of trouble here for Nate. We've got another section on it. They've got a lot of sandbags. Bart Y here. Sangar walls. Dingo dingering in there. Ken Crab moving in. Falchion Pioneer charging forwards. Australians abandon the post in the face of this Germanic assault. Here's the Falchion Pioneer spearhead the assault. As they very much intended to do, at least that's sort of what the actual role was. They were basically airborne assault engineers. Typically, some of the best in a Falchion Mega Division would have been the Falchion Pioneers. So, little fun fact there. Divvying them up here. Gunnerly's managed to pantafast their course thanks to the Veterans 1 range bonus. 
So in here the section, we got Reiki package there for Nate. Arching Pioneer going is pursuing with still Nate's got a great resource lead here, a platoon command post. Of course, fast training could both be good choices. There we go. We do get the platoon command post. LG40 for Daniel D. So anyone those reasons to go for Luftwaffe besides the pool of Faction Puny and Faction Yeagers is the LG40. It's a great way of just getting out a light anti-tank weapon without having to expend manpower. Panzergoni is there for Daniel D. as well. Thumbs up. Maybe some sand or oh, bark here on the Sangar walls could be a good idea there for Daniel D. He's done to definitely make a bit of returns here in the field, but still very much being held here by the British 6th Armoured Division. Reggae packages for the sappers. Dingo, they're doing a bit of healing up here. Clearly got some tea there in the back. Don't worry, it's just mostly lukewarm. Mostly. Oh, some of it might be a bit cold. Victory point under enemy control. Panzer going near company ready there. We can see Daniel is reeling down a lot of bar wine sandbags all the place here. A lot of preparations. Panzer going is here for Daniel D. A bit further away there from any safe Falchim Jaegers. No caps with the Panzer going is. Perhaps he is going to try for the Falchimagus, or perhaps Daniel D is scheming something else. Maybe mortar, maybe machine gun, maybe more Falchim Punia. We don't know. But there you go. Got a bit of telecall in here. Daniel D's men withdraw here in the face of this swift British assault. Falchim Punia doing when they can. We do get Panzergunners after all here. Perhaps Daniel D was like, you know, maybe I can get away with it. And I guess he decided he couldn't after all. Do Panzergunners, solid choice. Obviously, they got. Much better with the buffs. We got a Humber meanwhile on the way here for Nath. And of course, this is going to make an LD40 an excellent thing to call in here for Daniel. I mean, he could also go for the Pack 40, but the LD40 again is more manpower conservative. And again, also like a bit more mobile, so it's more useful hunting down like vehicles, in my experience. They does lack the gun shield, so the crew is more exposed. So that's obviously some weaknesses plus versus late game armor. Like Matilda, the LD40 is not great so it does require to be a bit more on aggressive footing there you go lg40 on the way there humber armored car here out for the british one of many armored cars the british army would operate throughout the war and most of them would actually be typically you know significantly upgunned in various ways and there you go can crash by the humber there that's definitely going to hurt here daniel d that will Definitely limit his ability to like just pressure the map here. And of course, to see things and lay down mine. So that's a great kill here for Nath. Really removes East's thorn in his side here. As typically, a can crack can be one of those things that are really tough for the British to deal with. So, Nath being able to destroy that, I imagine, has brought Nath a great sense of relief. We're losing a victory point to and we got the LD40 here ready, the Leiters Geschutz 40. Now he's just quickly merged the Grenadiers with it. There you go, setting up with the LD-40. Basically an anti-tank weapon slash infantry gun for the airborne division. So the Falchim Mega Divi Shonen. There's also a larger version, the LD-42 with a 105 mm gun. Could fire both the hammer piercing and high explosive rounds. As a fun fact, in game one can't fire high explosives. Panzers are going south for Sea the Sappers. Daniel, the floating man, but definitely feels like he wants to go for Falchimagus, and who can blame him? But there you go. Grenade off here. Sappers, though, will fizzle a bit with that one. Humber sneaking southwards. LD40 will need to deal with that. Interesting enough, we're not seeing an officer's quarters here for Daniel D and his uh, Panzergrenade company because it's going to, like, you know, go Panzergrenades, LD40s, and Falchimagus. Officer's quarters is going to be an excellent investment to go along with those two as well. That is something worth pointing out there with Daniel D. Particularly when he's like floating so much manpower fuel anyways, he's going to go for you know, all those, again, tier 2 units. Get the officer's quarters. Smoke deployed here. Nice response there by Nate, though. In this regard, though, not quite as nice as Fort because he clearly thought it'd be here and then it turns out it was there. Tactically, though, it does make sense here. And of course, this is when Daniel, shall we say, slightly, you know, caught Nate unprepared. Do get some Falchimagers now dropping in. Thumbs up the Daniel D's a mix of Panzer Grenadiers, Falchimagers, Falchim Puny and Grenadiers. Thumbs up to that. Quite a bit of infantry obviously here for Daniel D. This is supposed to come up to five squads of infantry now. We do also finally get the officers' quarters. Though again, could have had this up ahead of time. There's Falchimagers within immediately been mentioned to one. Still, Nath continues to exert immense map control here. This always him withdrawing the Humber. 
as he's already got the come to command push-ups. So really, really strong signing of Renee. Again, partly because down he's been trying to find good footing here. And partly again, just well actually good aggressive gameplay there for Nate. And to just an insult to injury here and a massive headache for Daniel. He's of course rushing out the Matilda 2 tank, which currently, with what Daniel has, is gonna be tough to deal with. Again, the LG40 is not very good versus Matilda's. In fact, it's a bit rubbish. It's good versus light vehicles, obviously, to some extent, some medium armor, but stuff that's heavier like the Matilda 2, the LG40 just falls flat on its face. So, Daniel gives off his basically pack 40s, Stooks, or, you know, taking for Marlas or taking up for Panzer Fours. He could also try and go for the Flak 36. He's kind of two command points off from that, though. I don't know if he's going to do that. And in fact, Daniel D here goes for another Fudge Mega Squad. Of course, this puts him up in really, like, you know, heavy infantry levels there. Two Fudge Mega Squads, the Panzergunis, Grenadiers, and the two Fudge Pioneers. That's six squads of infantry. And a fair chunk of them are, you know, a bit more expensive, a bit more, you know, you know, elite in a sense. So, definitely going to be a challenge for Nate's infantry, but for the Matilda 2, it's just, you know, lunch. So, that creates a bit of a technical difficulty here for Daniel, because, again, particularly the Fudge Makers are going to be quite exposed versus the Matilda. He can quickly wipe them if he's not... Uh, you know, carefully, he's just really unlucky. And again, the LG40 is going to struggle to make an impact on it, unless he flanks it. We do get foot guards here for Nate to get the support elements here. Gonna need some Sturmgeschütze here to have any remote chance anytime soon in slowing down the Matilda. South side, you got Pontwing, Grab, Pani, he's been right, but the Sappers foot guards on the way. Diving in here, Glenny is almost wiped out. LG40 will have to turn around. Fudge Maker's hiding out here. And these close being right with the Tilda 2. LG40 gets a good shot. We see more withdrawals here from Daniel. As again, the Matilda here is absurdly good versus infantry. He's easily like just the best anti infantry vehicle in a sense, to its cost level. I mean, you compare, say, the Sturm Panzer 4 with the Sturm Panzer 4, just kind of looks incredibly mediocre in comparison. Costs more than the Matilda 2, but again. Despite having a massive gun, the Matilda 2 just, e you know, easily outperforms the Sturm Panzer Force massive we gun in both terms with infantry. But there you go, troop reinforcing healing here. Gonna need to merge a lot there, that's for sure. Stug slowly around there, Fort Daniel D, thumbs up to that. To and of course we'll arrive at Veteran 2 one courtesy of the officer's quarters. That's obviously bloody great. Foot guards bringing in for Neath. Not much out of his battle group beyond that though. Of course, it is also worth pointing out, though, Nate does lack any anti-tank guns. He only has got the foot guards, so if Daniel can deal with the foot guards, the Stug should have a good chance versus the Matilda, too. Fudgemakers, even with the Sappers down here, that's definitely a great engagement for the Fudgemakers. The Sappers are definitely not in a remotely good spot for that one. So there you go. Crash push here by the 4th Fudgemaker Division here. Most Fudgemaker Divisions actually have their own Stug unit attached to it. Little fun fact there, actually. And there you go, foot guards hitting the mine. And of course, this means Nath's Matilda is now currently a bit explosive as the Stug. And I imagine Daniel's going to push at least for one more Stug. Well, of course, I have to see. Picture points wise, Nath's got a great lead here with Daniel. Fudge Omegas, Fudge and Punira. Pioneers, and we've got grenades being researched here. Clearly, find a tank grenade to help deal with that Stug and support his Matilda. Because, oh, again, that Matilda is going to be in a bit of an uncomfortable position. Honey's been caught in there. Stug shoots. There you go, grenades up. LG40 shoots, unsurprisingly bounces off Matilda. Stug does not. Bounce again. Stu, though, did bounce a shot there from the Matilda. That's great for Stu. There we go. Nice one the bound grenades here. Nate's force being pushed out to the open. Could do with a bit more to support the Panzer grenades to move in here. Bring in hard for the Sfarts land there. Stu keeps it up. Fox make as well. There's Saps taking damage. Note here that Daniel is liking the Stu distance because he doesn't know if Nate has any anti tank guns behind it. So he wants like increase his chances of getting out of there fast if, say, you know, the foot guards appear, but even there's a pair of anti tank guns. As the Stu can always quickly go down. Fudge Megas and Glenn is pushing 40, LG40 providing excellent support here. Further south, Fudge and Puny advancing. Heavy damage here. Lots of shots going off here. 
German infantry slowly trying to prime up. They can hear from British hands, but the British are stalwartly finding there. Go look like to be a point blank blast. Two thumbs up. Yes, point blank blast. Great ability. And I think an active benefit from the fixes to, you know, the Stukes pathing and the whole case mate bit there. Matilda there sends him two charges forward, but he could actually risk getting Pantafazard here. Nate, yeah, charging in there, shots bouncing, but he's going to get within Pantafaz range here. There we go, damage engine now. Shot bouncing in from the Stuke here. Smoke being deployed by Matilda. Another shot went through here. Matilda does look like it might just... No, oh, it didn't make the escape. LG40 actually manages a penetrating hit through the smoke, lighting up Nate's Matilda there. Meanwhile, a second Matilda has arrived now, but too late to save its comrade in arms. Need to fix up the Stug. That's in two ball that one. Another Stug on the way there for Daniel. Two thumbs up to that. Not much more of the battle group. Could go for the reserves ability again for cheap reinforcements. Could also go for the Flak 36 for cool guy points. And also, of course, just a bigger gun to make things miserable for Nathan with. We'll have to see, of course, what Daniel does. But the amount of infantry, despite Matilda's, is definitely giving a bit of room to work with here. Of course, again, Nathan does have plenty of infantry too. <laughs> And heavy need repairs here. Sector lost. Stuk, number two armor's done. We hear you've got trouble. Gunning forwards. Maybe simply can't find a few tins of biscuits left in the Matilda too that didn't get burnt to a crisp. Arjun Pina vs. Saps in the south here. Samp is closing in for the glory of King George here with the Sten guns. Second Stug ready. Noting here that of course Daniel would benefit from some pillar up machine guns for the Stukes. I typically found that tends to add a good bit of anti infantry performance to them. Sounds like the Fulton Pini finding up with the Sappers, but Daniel's definitely starting to get more active map control than he versus Nate, though he's still aggressively behind the victory points. You do get the Stuka Lloyder, but it seems like Daniel is perhaps still waiting to make a decision there on if it's going to be Reserve C or the Flat Foot 6. Would have figured he'd go for like prioritize, you know, other reserves of the Flat Foot 6 here, but he decided to go for the Lloyder first. Comes with a taking a lot of damage, got the marksman shot there. Until rolling through the smoke here around from the two Stukes here. Taking a lot of damage, LD40 supporting up now, German assault on the hill as well here, Nace lines crumbling here, positioning wasn't great and lacking any machine guns well, makes it a bit harder further to port the German assault here, particularly with all these Falchimagers and Falchimpines supporting second Matilda down. Now this is where things get a bit more dangerous for Nath, his losses are really starting to get nasty. Could emerge the Glenys for the Falchimpines that engagement, but uh, perhaps not too much going on for Daniel, we got the infirmary up there. Oh. Of course, one thing also worth noting, of course, be worth for Daniel to, again, with so much infantry to consider a medic bunker. Just a small note there. Not something he does have to do, but I think it could have been a nice addition there for Daniel. Our supply line's broken. Another Matilda for Nate. Of course, at this stage, the question does become for Nate, does he want more Matildas or maybe he wants more foot guards or maybe he wants more France or Crusaders? The Matildas at this stage, while certainly nice, are not quite getting if they wants to, I think, under current circumstances here. There's a Daniel D and Deutschland. We're losing a victory point. Reinforcing healing. Further south here, Falchim Puny are busy. Stu quickly hauling out of there. Matilda infantry support. Pause on the options Daniel D to consider would be at this point taking up for the Panzer Company. The enemy has our himself. Point but for Neath, yeah, I'm guessing he's going to want to go for an archie, in which case, of course, having the Matildas just, you know, ready and, you know, steady to the take the shots for the Archer is, of course, a solid compensation, but he does need the Arch for that to really work. South South Stand going for the Fudge Impunia. And we got Triple Cap now for down here, Nathan. 430 for 166, South Charge off here. Cold Gambit here. Bruce goes down there to the Fudge Impunia, but the Fudge Impunias end up withdrawing themselves. Got the Vetsy Tilt, you 40 moving forwards. Panzer Glenies, Falchim Jaegers, Glenies all the ready. We've got Falchim Panies on the, or Falchim Jaegers on the flank here. Panzer Glenies rushing straight ahead here. Foot guards have us flanking in the other hand. Noting by the way that neither player has any heavy machine gun teams there or anything similar like say a Flak 30 
for Daniel D. I don't know if Bob was in placement here out of me. That is a bit noble. There go. Point blank blast. Bunch of infantry in front of the Stug is definitely great for the point blank blast. Of course, increasing the value of it. Fudge Megas launching a flank here. Nave's Northern flank, of course, completely exposed to this. Matilla fires. Gets a bit of damage. He's going to be sent here upon by two Stugs. Smoke deployed here as Nath looks to extricate his Matilda here from the clutches of Deutschland. The enemy have taken our territory. Daniel here is looking in a very strong position now. Definitely a bit of a turnaround there from the early game. Still no sign on the Panzer Company. Meanwhile, Nath they're clearly signing up for an Archer Tank Destroyer or self-propelled anti-tank gun because the British Doctrine did not British Army Doctrine did not work with tank destroyers. They called them self-propelled anti-tank guns because the British obviously have to be British about everything. Pulling in here. Got the victory point here again. They're desperately looking to see both hold the bleed, but also like get a bit more bleed in on here. On Daniel. As if I've been pushed back, falling back here towards Mount Bacon, though taking some losses here from the pursuing and very upset Englishman. We're losing a victory point. So let's fix that. Panzer Company almost done. We do get infantry assault talking here for Daniel D. Not too big of a surprise here. Victory point belongs to the enemy. Parking is there, probably should be a bit careful. There we go. Daniel doesn't withdrawing. He's also withdrawing the other fight to make a sword here. No both of the two. We do get a strong punch for Daniel here. Got blast from Nate's infantry. Not a bad pick. And there you go. Archer is out here for Nathan in the 6th Armor Division. 17 pounder gun on an Valentine tank chassis. Daniel's there pursuing the LD40. We've got other Stug there gaining ace level. Very nice. Two thumbs up. Other Stug, though, the first one is taking a lot of damage, getting snared up as well here. This could cost uh, Dang here Stug, which of course would be amazing for Nath. Yup, Stug kaput. Of course, not all smooth sailing are there. That ace Stug is obviously going to be a massive headache for Nath if Daniel makes good use of it. If he doesn't, not so much. South side, Fudge and Pioneer busying it. March and Moon are rolling ahead here, or technically rolling backwards as the way it's been set up. Technically, had to reverse towards his targets. This is actually the rear of the archer. Fun fact. Grenades in the midst of the British forces. Stug there takes a mass hit from the archer, and that could very well be the empty of Daniel Stug. And he's managed to get. Yeah, he didn't. Now it's down to just a Sturm Panzer Fear versus the Matilda and the archer, and that's not quite good there for Daniel. So he will need to replace the Stugs with something. Either more Stugs or Panzer Fours. Sarsat, so Fudge and Peony finding with the Australians, rapidly forcing those Javiers off that southern point. Battle group ability unlocked. Got reinforcements, got healing here. Storm Panzer heading southwards. Got the Matilda up on the northern point. And we go, Australians there, pushed back by the Storm Panzer Fear, and it's 150 mm with a gun. And a fresh push towards the north side here by the Daniel. Will be a point is being and going straight for the base here. Daniel is feeling very bold today here with the Sturmpanzer. Of course, officers quarters for Panzer Company, depending on the units go out. Of course, all be good here. Nice, or decent shot there. Doesn't kill anyone, but you know, certainly leaves some dead. So we're on Norfords. Archer Veteran 2 1. Very good. Here for Neath. Bit quiet again as both sides are lining up for the next series of engagements. Quick sniper shot there on Marksman shot on the Fudge Megas. Good shooting there. LD Ford in the danger from Fudge Pure setting up here. Storm Panzer rolling in. We're losing a 
fuel points. Panda for the down D2 thumbs up. He would still benefit from officers. Quarters obviously later down there and some Panzer on the side skirts. There, meanwhile, you got Nathan the move here, rolling in Matilda support in the infantry, and of course got the archer in the serve further. Crusaders on the way for Nathan. Interesting choice there. Matilda rolling ahead, fighting Punic, Grains being pushed back as the Matilda calls rolls ahead, supported by Scout British Roman right here. Daniel's busy in a bit of trouble. We got the Grenadiers launching. Oh, getting touched up here. Oh, on the Storm Panzer, but quickly pushed off here as it takes direct fire. Obviously, the lack of turret does, of course, really show that again, you know, the Matilda is just, you know, more effective in a lot of ways. Maybe does make as big a splash, but this high rate of fire fund competence again, the lack and plus the turret just means again can just more easily pursue targets. The crow itself being withdrawn again. That's really just why I think Matilda 2 just beats the Storm Panzer out. Like, sure, case the Storm Panzer will just, in a sense, get a white, but a lot of the time it just doesn't do as much. You know, the Matilda is just incredibly consistent in its performance comparatively. South Saudi Mine goes off here. Crusader rolling out near Fort Neath. No attempt at grants. And you know, continues to exert strong weapon control now here. But again, we'll need some armor to do some of the heavy lifting here. Fire Champion of something met here with the Crusader tank. Crusader Mark II, to be specific. There we go. Fight. Fierce finding a stump and joining in. Doesn't even kill a single soul. The Fudge Maker's wiped out here. Matilda moves in. Almost has a wipe there as well. Close call there for Daniel. Losing a Fudge Maker score like that would certainly be quite expensive. Storm Panzer there has a cheap veterans one. That's at least something there for Daniel D. Further south, Victor Woman sees Panther 4. Panzer Glenius. Fudge Pinning Suffer T. Drain to the section. LD4 taking nasty hit here. Storm Panzer shoots. There we go. Archie engaging. Crusader swarming in here. We can see the Nath senses mistake here by Daniel. He's going in hard here to punish him for. We do get the Luthafa Lloyder called in here. Stokas. The Stutz come bomba rolling in here. Crusader until they're taking hits. In the south here, fresh fighting going as well. The Sap's about to get wiped out. Here's the southern victory point. Has fallen here to the fourth fight. She's making to be sure. Going in hard here and almost got a wipe here. Can he score the final shot? No. All short. Slips through his fingers. Tilda, Crusader, and Archie off time from the north here, catching it. Daniel Southern Frontier in a bit of a twist here. Fudge and Punish got about to get wiped out if he's not careful or just really lucky. He got very lucky then. Crusader going up for the Panda 4 here. Panda goes also in trouble. Continuing the assault here. Lots of troops pulling up, including the foot guards here. Say so Daniel got off fairly well there. That could have gone a lot worse for him. Truth be told. Back at Daniel G base. Not much else here. Nave space all remains a bit quiet for now. A lot of troops heading out and back. We got a pack 40 there for Daniel D as well. The Panzer out there can only fear it. Maybe now he wishes he'd gone for the flag 36. Oh, oh, oh. The enemy has it. We could also just go for more Panzer Falls. Stooks, we could side tech for Mardis. In this regard, though, of course, Daniel does have multiple options. I don't think necessarily any of them are wrong. They just have slightly different advantages in situations they sort of perform better in. Looks like the LD40 scored a penetrating hit here. Sec oh, pack 40 almost done. It's the LD40 escorts the Storm Panzer Fear. Pack 40 ready here, of course, officers' quarters. Still none here out of Daniel D's Panzer Company for his Panzer 4, for example, and his Storm Panzer, and any other units you might get out of it. Another Storm Panzer. That is an interesting choice out of Daniel. Definitely not one I would recommend personally. Because again, as you might notice, I'm not a big fan of the Storm Panzer 4. Oh, he cancels it. Straight into the archer there. Matilda getting flanked though. Oh, Panther Fuzz off damaged engine. Great here for him. Have we actually got a second archer out here for Nath? Me mother does look like here. Daniel's... Panther for much score wipe here on the Matilda 2. The do have the second archer moving up, covering it. And the foot guards here as well. There we go. Great shots. Double whammy here. Plus, stun shot from the archers. Oh, foot guards here. Second archer. There we go. Daniel D was not expecting a second archer. And Nath was more than able to capitalize on this. Definitely costing Daniel D. Does have a second Panther on the way there. 
Got the Crusader sitting up here for the Ruins and going for the victory points here. Daniel's victory points are definitely on the fed here from Neith. Of course, he's looking to get a triple cut going again. Absolutely no mercy. Matilda's again just ripping through those Fudgemakers. Almost going a white there on the Ace Fudgemaker squad. Crusader flanking the Strum Panzer. LG40 setting up. Pack 40 is... Oh, that was a lot of explosions, but not a lot of damage to the Crusader tank. 245 is on in 10. East Fox Makers there withdrawing. Punch goes pushing back the Bren section. Grabbing the victory point. Fox Makers setting out. The enemy is down to 100 points. The enemy has our victory points now. Some rather fierce staff here. 245. This is 91. Daniel, though, has definitely got less room for error in there. Go, Fudgy Megas, hit the mine. Victory point. Rudolf and enemy. Albert there got blown sky high. Fighting for Northern Point, Crusader going for the Panzer Grenadiers. Pax, Panzers, Storm Panzers all the way on the north. Still no officers' quarters and still no armored sides because that's Daniel D. Of course, I wouldn't blame for just prioritizing more Panzers. But there you go, straight to the Archers here again, foot guards. Getting some damage in the train. We got the light even. Daniel setting an all he can to destroy here. The British tank destroyers. Foot diving pin and angle. Archer actually wrecked here by the Luftwaffe. Sting blow there to Britannia. If only he had some ball force in placements, eh? Or a post and gun track, I don't know. Might have helped him a bit there, but it's too late for that now. There he is. Fudge makes all moving in here. Still has one archer left, he still has the Crusader, still has the Matilda, so it's not all bad here from Neath, but losing his more veteran archer crew line that definitely is gonna put a bit of a dent in his force capabilities here. Another Pantaful for Daniel D, two thumbs up. Of course he still would benefit from officers quarters and armored side skirts. Make no mistake. We have 200 points remaining. Picks on the Panda 4. Of course, another thing to consider at this point could be machine gun bunkers or flak emplacement to cover some of the picture points here and there to make it harder for Neath to rush them down with infantry, in particular the southern point here. Neath clearly has the only propensity just rushing straight forward, ignoring everything else. So, you know, setting up a machine gun bunker here or even a flak 38 emplacement could be a nice way of, you know, putting a bit of a dent in Nathan's uh, harassment there. Second Panda 4, they're almost done. Fudging Puny is supporting a Panther Force more in the center. Pushed off the southern point here. I mean, it's also worth noting, I mean, Daniel D has got some impressive infantry preservation here. Like, he still has, like, managing six infantry squads. He's really damn impressive. You can see all the metals went against him. So, two thumbs up to Daniel D. That is an absolutely praiseworthy infantry play there. And, of course, another element, again, is just the way he's been quite able to, like, consistently make use of the merge brothers and the Grenadiers to help maintain all these squads. And, of course, Infant service also, of course, makes this much more manageable. Of course, Medic Bunker would further assist with this, but that's that. Got another Archer again out here for Neath. And there you go, Armored Science goes for Daniel D. Finally happening. Two thumbs up. Schutz and Onzeve, Minor Kinder. Fudge Megas, Panzers all heading north at sea. Could, of course, have the Fudge Megas run on in the Panzers. Fighting on the hill here. Striking for the Fazerland. Shoots almost ready here. Archer shoots, misses, snares off. And there you go. Armored Sarge gets off. Big push with infantry. Panda Force. Fudge Megas, Fudge Pierce. LG40 going in for a flank here on Nath's positions. Really good attack route, but that's it. Nath was prepared. Another just the Archers there. And Panda Force now being sandwiched between the two Archers. Not a great sandwich there for the Germans, that for sure. Great one for Nathan now. British do like their sandwiches. Panda 4 down here, section's in trouble. Good kill there for Nath, but still even then, with that Panda 4 down, his lines are collapsing. He's dropping here, though he's again rushing in for the big point. Again, bunker, flak in place from there, could prove to be a good investment there for Nath. LG4 being snapped here by the Crusader tank. Section being forwards here. Crusader there could go down here. Bazooka find the Panda 4, Crusader. I think we'll go down here unless he gets exceedingly lucky, which apparently is. Wow, that is some incredible luck there. Like, so many misses there on the rear armor and that. That is really lucky for him. Time's moving for the victory point. We got 164 was 80. Storm Panzer 2 being fixed up. Archers, Matilda's here, of course, all doing some repairs. Panda 4 swinging hard here for the fences. British. 
Australian troops. Then we got the Fudge Makers and Ace Lemon as well. Here we could see a wipe here on Nate's Aussies. And the Panda 4 number 2 is down. The Archers continues just to reap a horrific toll here on Daniel's Panzer <coughs> And there we go. Matilda just snaps away half the Fudge Makers. But get Panda faster in return here. Could the Ace LG40 finish the job? Who knows? Friend section, four stall figure, 158 versus 77. Fighting remains pretty fierce and neck and neck here. Fudge and Puny are setting up, Granny is reinforcing. Plane missions from the Leute, Sturm Panzer rolling hit it pretty boldly versus all these archers. Calling in the Leute, rats out in eighth space in absolutely bullish move here. There we go, one archer down, second archer down to the Sturm Panzer. A huge blow here to Nate. That just practically gutted him. Actually, using the smoke there quite effectively in the world as well. There's a really nice play there by Daniel D. Two thumbs up. Is definitely going to leave uh, Nate crippled. Hunts up soon, the Australians see it. Daniel D definitely getting something out of the Sturm Panzer IV. They're definitely showing me wrong there to at least an extent. I'm still not going to go for it personally. I still prefer Panzer IVs or Stugs over the Sturm Panzer IV. Another arch ready for Neath. Heading for the Southern Victory Point. Daniel D is looking now very strong. He's really like managed to like turn this around here quite well. Daniel's got the triple cap now underneath here. Sixth armor division in a bit of a top spot here with the Germans. Men on the fourth fight are going to be shrunken to put up an absolutely impressive fight. Gabadi Laden here, but Nate dodges it mostly except for Reginald there who loses well, most of his limbs in the process. Got the fast moving something at the FT 42. John Panzer a few moving in. Archer tank destroyers are available. Almost wiped the section there. Yeah, fast moving splinters moving in there. Got a right hit from the Archer and the John Panzer. LD 14 trouble taking Panther forming up. Still not officer's quarters yet with Daniel D. Until the rolling in. Going to the clutch being wiped out. They did match with the Fudge Magus. Panther Faust here. Slightly shocks the crew there. Fudge Magus taking a nice hit blast there from the Matilda. Pack 40 being swamped by the remaining foot guards up north here pushing for victory point. We got Fudge Magus on the nearby ready to put a halt to that. And the South here Matilda and Fortress. Could see the H Fudge Magus go down. Really close there. Sweet George's land. No, they went down. Up north, though, sappers exterminated here. And there you go. That appears to be it. GG. Well played out of Nath. Game over. An absolutely brutal match here on Twin Beaches with a lot of damage on both sides. A lot of casualties. But in the end, Daniel D, though, I think really just handles infantry. Well, the Ultra Cruiser just had a lot more infantry. And so only a fair bit more elite infantry as Neath kind of just stuck to one foot guard section and never really went any above that. Neath or Daniel Neal had two fighting mix squads, one panzer in his squad, plus several fighting pioneers and the grenadiers. He also went for the officer squads for all of them. So there's a lot, you know, strength going on the infantry wise. I do think that helped out Daniel D a fair bit at times. Whereas Neath, obviously with the overemphasis and the archers could deal with the armor, but at the same time, then that's something to deal with the infantry. Yeah, I do think some grants here might have been a very nice choice there for Neath, rather than, you know, all of the Archers and all of the Matildas. So, a bit of a consolation. The bearable, nice match here. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment, tell your friends, and family, tell your family. And as always, you can support the public by building a Patreon. Patreon. This is Imperial Cheers, and see you tomorrow for another exciting episode. Bye, everyone.